Come with us as we do major maintenance on our motorhome generator. Okay, let's get started. We will be listing the parts for this repair and the links in the description below. Today we will be doing major maintenance on a 1994 Onan Cummins 4000 Genset Emerald Plus Generator. It is model number 4BGEFA26100K. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be replacing the filter. We're going to be replacing the oil pressure switch which is behind this part here. We're going to be replacing the two spark plugs. This one that's easiest to get to and the spark plug that's in the back of the unit. We'll even show you a trick to do that without having to drop the generator down. And we're going to do an oil change and then we are also going to be replacing the circuit board the fuel filter. We will also be replacing the fuel pump, replacing the air filter, and we're also going to be actually replacing the carburetor. Always when working on any kind of electronics in your motorhome, the easiest way to disconnect all the power is to use your battery disconnect. All motorhomes have these on them, the newer ones as well as these older ones, including this 1994. You simply press this one for the auxiliary battery for off, and then the main battery you also press this one as well. And that's it. First, you're going to remove the remote plug. This plug goes to the interior of your motorhome, which has the start and stop switch as well as the hour meter. Next, you will remove the positive power cable. Next, you're going to remove this fuel pump fuse, which is located on the right side of the electric box. It is held in by a simple screw. Once you've done that, just simply set the part aside. Next, we're going to use needle nose vice grips to clamp the gasoline hose to cut off any gasoline coming into the unit. Then we are going to unclamp and remove the hose going to the fuel pump. Once that has been removed, just make sure that it's drained of all gasoline and then set it aside. Next, we are going to remove the fuel pump. This is held in by a screw. Loosen the copper gas tubing that goes to the fuel filter. Carefully move that over so you have access to work on the unit. Next, you want to disconnect the power supply that goes to the fuel pump. With the copper fuel line moved over, now you want to go ahead and remove it from the fuel filter. Again, use a paper towel to make sure you catch any gasoline. Once this is done, remove all the fittings from the old fuel pump. Make note of the old fuel pump's model number, as you'll want to make sure that this matches the new model. Now you're going to go ahead and put the fittings back onto the new fuel pump. You 
want to make sure that the fittings line up properly. You might want to double check your fittings to make sure that it fits properly. The other fitting might take some more work because again this is the copper gas line. With this it's important to make sure that everything fits. To get a good fit it's recommended to hand tighten the copper tubing to the fuel pump. However, there's no need to tighten it fully as you're going to be removing the carburetor at a later point. With all elements looking like they fit, the first thing you want to do is go ahead and plug the electrical back into the fuel pump. Then you want to go ahead and put the screw back in. Next, you want to remove the bolt for the air filter. Then carefully remove the dirty air filter out. This would also be a good time to drain the oil from the motor. Simply turn the valve to drain it. Since many times the generator will not start, you'll have to drain this without heating the oil, which will take longer. The oil fill is located here. The oil dipstick is also located here. The generator will take three and a half quarts of oil. However, you don't want to do this until after you've changed the oil filter and the oil pressure sensor. Next, you want to remove the spark plug wire. And start removing the five bolts from the generator shroud. This will give you access to the oil pressure sensor as well as easier access to the oil filter. To remove the oil pressure sensor, first unscrew the wire from the sensor. Then using a socket, remove the sensor and replace with a new one. Replace the old filter with a new one. Next you want to remove and replace the front spark plug. Just make sure that you have the gap correct. Now it's time to remove the carburetor, but before you do that, you are going to need to modify or find a smaller half-inch wrench. This is because the height of the generator box is so low that a full-size wrench will not fit. There are two half-inch size nuts that need to be removed for the carburetor. One is on the left side, the other is on the right side. But in order to do this, you'll have to remove the vacuum tube located here. It's very simple, you just undo the clip which will remove the hose. That will give you access to the other half inch nut. You'll also have to remove the linkage to the carburetor. This is simply a clip washer, spring, and another washer. This is what it looks like when the linkage is disassembled. You can also see here that the vacuum tube has been moved out of the way to get to that half-inch nut on the other side. 
This is what the generator looks like after the carburetor is removed. Please note the tube. This is what you're also going to disconnect from the plastic air filter. There are also three wires that will need to be removed. When you've removed the carburetor, you have enough room to get your arm back to where the spark plug is. That was our plan to see if this would happen, and it actually did. And so my son right now, he is in the process of putting in the new spark plug without having to drop down the generator. So that's a huge, huge benefit. This is the new carburetor compared to the old carburetor. And basically, they are pretty much identical. The one problem that we have had was this is the fuel filter. It goes into the carburetor. The new carburetor, one didn't come with a fuel filter, nor did it come with this bent elbow. We tried to remove this and have it put on the new carburetor. Unfortunately, we weren't able to do it. It just was stuck. We bent this a couple of times. So what we did is we ordered a new piece here on Amazon, and then we actually went to a plumbing store and we were able to find this. In our summary, at the end of the video, we'll have a solution for this problem. This right here is the part where the air filter will go. It's a box about so big. And to get this off, the interesting thing is it's got two bolts on the outside here, but the third one is actually located inside. So if you're ever trying to remove this piece, just remember there's no bolt on this side. It is actually located inside. And that kind of tricked us for a while until we found that out. So now we're ready to put this in and attach it to the generator. When reinstalling the carburetor, it is recommended that you install the back half inch nut first and then the front. Also, get a friend with small fingers to help you out. <laughs> you will need that. That will be helpful. Got a better shot there of the uh, oil pressure <laughs> switch that we've installed the new one. Again, once you're in it, you might as well do all these things. New oil filter okay. and new spark plugs. No. Okay, now the uh, bolts are in and the carburetor is in place. And now we just have to hook up the linkage again and the yeah. wire that goes on the back. Did you get the wire plugged in? Yeah. Oh, yeah. never mind. The wire is on the other side of the air filter. And in fact, you can see where his fingers are there. And that had to be unplugged and plugged. We were looking at it and it was pretty easy to do. There's four wires and they all went back in. Now we just need to move this vacuum tube back into its position there and click it into place. And there that's done. And now we need to do this linkage up here, right there. Okay, washer. Washer. Spring. Okay, here's a spring. And then washer. So I get the washer. All right. The clip is right there. Oh my gosh, you've got good eyes. And the retainer clip. All right, the retainer clip. Exactly like a body clip. Right. Do you need your needle nose pliers? Nope, push we're it good. down. Alright, we're good. Okay. We're in. Excellent. Okay. Now the next now. piece is we've got to hook in the gasoline, which is that piece down below. Oh. The fuel filter. So that's that piece right there. Okay, we're now putting on the shield here. And it's important that this shield's on here because it's an air-cooled engine. You need to make sure that the fins get the air. And without this, the engine would actually overheat. So that's why it's important. Okay, last but not least, we're going to replace the electronic board because we think it uh, also got damaged. These are about $110 to replace. OK, 
Okay, we've confirmed it's the same one. We're just uh, making sure we put the little waterproof housing for the switch in. That is something that it does not come with. It does come with a replaceable fuse, but the actual fuse holder, it does not come with, and that's this little piece here. All right, so that's all in place. And then we're gonna plug this in. Put it up back into its pot. The installation of the air filter. And that's the replacement air filter right there. Now, when we had taken this part with the old carburetor, that thing was just filled with oil and gas. So you could tell there was something definitely not working properly. So we're very excited to at least try this new carburetor where we want to make sure that everything is right, so we're replacing everything new. We're on the home stretch and almost done. First, we need to reconnect the gas line to the fuel pump before removing the vice grip hose clamp. Okay, should be good. Next, we need to reinstall the fuel pump fuse. This is simply held in with a screw. The fuse wire hooks into the power source terminal. Then the positive power cable is reconnected and secured. And finally, the remote wire that starts the generator from the inside and the hour meter are connected. Okay, there it is. Okay. All right, so. Let's start her up. Next, we're gonna go inside the motor home and turn back on the battery disconnect switches. Okay, let's see if she starts. As you can tell, we have power. The microwave is uh, showing that power's on. Let's go outside and take a look. Okay, well welcome to the summary and recommendations part of the video and let's get right into it. So would you have someone else to do the repair? This particular maintenance that we did, it didn't take any special tools. I don't think it really takes a major mechanic to do these items. Would we rebuild the carburetor? No, I didn't feel comfortable about rebuilding a carburetor. I'd seen some YouTube videos where they had tried to rebuild the carburetor. It did not work out for them, and so they basically ditched the entire generator. And most of the time, the problem with these generators is that they sit. In our particular case, we have a 1994 motorhome. It only has a little over 200 hours on the generator. I mean, if you break that down, that's hardly any time at all. These generators should be run about an hour a week, which might sound like a lot, but the problem when these generators are not used is the carburetors get clogged with old gasoline, and then they go bad. And from there, then everything else becomes a problem because then what people do is they start holding the buttons on the remote inside the motorhome, thinking that will help, 
and then the, the starter goes bad and then the uh, circuit boards go bad because uh, they're expecting the generator to just go at their whim and that's not going to happen. So the most important thing is is that one, generators are run. Uh, just don't let them sit. Number two, if you're going to do a repair, first things first, do the carburetor. I think the carburetor is going to be your biggest problem and you know while you're in there you might as well go ahead and take care of these other items. Okay, so recommendations. What would we do different than what we did before? Um, the big thing is that elbow coming off of the carburetor. That thing is, pardon the expression, is a pain in the butt. If you go onto Amazon and you look under Onan generators, you will find what they're doing now is they're putting a different elbow on that. And what they're doing is they're just hooking a gasoline hose directly to that different elbow. And then what they're doing, instead of using an official Onan uh, gas filter, they're using a plastic gas filter. And then they're just running that line directly to the fuel pump. If we were going to do it again, that's definitely the change that we would make. So anyway, to wrap things up, we hope you enjoyed the video here. Uh, please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And if you get a chance, please subscribe. We appreciate it. Thank you.